How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, doing really good, thanks. Really good. Are you standing up? Yeah. Same. <laughs> I do literally all... I did my first podcast yesterday where I've not been stood up. Really? Yeah. Are your wee legs just sore? You know, we break. <laughs> yeah, no, because it, it's silly. It's just something, that, something I was going to get into about, you know, healthier habits is stand up more. <laughs> Yeah, no, honestly, like, see, that is one thing that I really have noticed a massive difference from, from sitting all the time. I even, like, I went on holiday after sitting all the time, and see, walking on that holiday, it felt like I was learning to walk again for the first time, and so I've been so mindful since then, because if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So, exactly. Like, you need to be continually, and apart from anything else, like, you're just crushing everything down, like. Yeah, yeah you, you, you know, even just from a pros, pros, prostor? Prost, Postural. Prostor. Prost, oh. Postural. <laughs> Prostitute. again. I'm going to go home. That's it. I'll see you later. We are. <laughs> even from that point of view, you know, you sat down, hunchback and all that sort of stuff. You stand up. Oh, and my like... goodness. I always say I'm turning into the hunchback in Notre Dame here. I can't be having this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, honestly, I think it's such an underrated tool. And, yeah, I'll go into more detail about it. But I was reading, like, this article from a standing desk company is, if you stand up four hours on, four hours off, five days a week, like your normal working time, it's equivalent to running 18 marathons. No, I saw that on your story and I yeah. actually screenshotted it and sent it to someone else, like a PT. And I was like, surely to God, there's no way. Like I was absolutely dumbfounded. I was like, wow. And he yeah. actually then went and researched it and was like, because he found it hard to believe as well. And he said, no, Amy, that is actually right now. Like, I know. No, it's, it's crazy. That's a mind blowing statistic though about those marathons. Like, cause people, I feel like people need to hear that kind of like gripping uh, statistic yeah. to sort of urge them to implement change a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. That leads on quite nicely into, you know, the power of actually creating a habit, you know, yeah. where do you even start with that? But do you want to introduce yourself like for, Anyone who doesn't know you, who is Jordan? So I'm Jordan. I'm a failed recruiter and being sacked was the best thing to ever happen to my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now, yeah, living out in Holland. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't even know that. No, wow. yeah, it's, it's a random story. And I tell you, if you believe in fate and all that sort of, uh, am I allowed to swear on your thing? I go on ahead, sure. No rules here. So if, if you believe in fate and all that sort of bullshit, like my, back in 1989, my dad used to play professional football for Volendam. And he used to come to the gym where I'm working at now. Oh, no way! Yeah, he, he literally, he, he knows the owner, good friends with the owner. They hadn't spoken in about 15 years. Um oh. Oh, did he know you were going there? Did you know this was where he was? Or did you find out after? Um, no, I, 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 so, so basically the guy who owns the gym, he messaged my dad in the first time in like 15 years saying, like, oh, I'm going out to Dubai. Let's meet up for a pint because obviously my, my parents live in Dubai. So he, my dad sort of said to the owner, you know, I'm pretty much going to get sacked because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, just get him to come over to Holland. And what what work at my gym? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Oh my goodness! So you've been there then since like over COVID. This has been like yeah. a COVID cure COVID. for you in a way. Yeah. Oh, it's not so lovely. Well, that's such a nice story to like start with. You know, yeah. that was something, right? That was happening to you, and you could have like gone into complete destructive mode. Because a lot of people will be dealing with that sort of situation in that they've lost their job and they're feeling all their maybe healthy habits that they had established from being in a work routine and everything, they could now be out the window. Where do you even start with actually getting into a good habit? You know, because people like procrastination apart from anything and just breaking a habit is hard, right? It takes what, like 30 days to establish a new habit, maybe even longer. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll be lying with you with you if I told you exactly the days and the dates and all that sort of stuff. Aye, it's not really relevant, but it does take, it's not like something you can just get up tomorrow and be like, you're changed. It's sort of something that takes time, right? And, and I think the key is, and it's part of the reason why I became a PT is, I've been lied to by the health and fitness industry. I think the health and fitness industry- We all industry have, we're broadcast shit on the daily. Yeah, it's it's an absolute shit show. <laughs> Everyone's saying, you know, they've got abs because they do BCAA, BCAAs, but no, you're injecting steroids into your asshole, love. It's not, it's not fucking BCAAs. Get off, your, get off your high horse. But the one thing, and I remember that, that there's a PT, uh, James Smith. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's very James famous. Smith. James Smith. He, he, he's, James Smith. Yeah. And he sort of. He really opened my eyes and said, you know, unfollow all of these fitspiration sort of He's crap. debunking a lot of the myths, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I followed him. And one thing, you know, he, he talks about like James Clear and, you know, Atomic Habits and all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't really until I started looking into it a bit more. And I was chatting to my parents about it because I've never been overweight. I've, I've never had that issue. Yeah, but we actually had that discussion. I forgot about that, that we would be on the opposite end of the spectrum from most yeah. in that we like struggle to gain weight, whereas the majority of the population are struggling with their weight and feel like they want to lose weight, right? Yeah, yeah 100%. And I think the, the thing like off that quickly is just because I see the scales go down by a mistake and I lose weight by a mistake does not mean that I do not understand how it feels when the scales go up on their side by a few kilos. It's the same emotions. It's just two completely different outcomes. Yeah, for sure. You, Yeah, I totally. And especially with like working with a range of clients through understanding their experiences, it gives you a better understanding and knowledge of how it does feel because they relay that to you. Yeah. And, and, uh, Thing is, like, I was chatting to my dad about it, and since I, I was probably four or five years old, I've always been playing rugby, football, I've always been playing. Yeah, very active. And it, he sort of made the point, and I didn't think about it properly until he told me, is I have a lot of very healthy habits yeah. that I do without thinking about now. That other so, people would think like, oh my gosh, like I'd love to be like that, whereas that's your norm. Exactly, and and, and like, well, you, you know, we said... Uh, at the start is um, I do my podcast standing up now I don't sit down yeah so that's because you know your non-exercise thermogenesis your neat is 15 percent of your daily calories where you eat where the calories you burn in a gym is only about five, you know five percent so it's yeah. I really focus and put a lot of emphasis on my neat and you, you know as we said you know over the Instagram chat it I used to count my steps. At the, I used to count my steps. I used to count my protein. I yeah. used to count my calories. Do you, do you think there is a place for counting steps? I think it can be helpful for, for completely sedentary individuals to give them a motivation to move. But I feel like for a lot of people, it can set them into destructive ways and that they become totally obsessive about it. I, I think I, I'll, I'll answer this along with counting calories as well. because that's something Okay, I'm yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's, these metrics are good at the start and it's a good way to find out where you are. Yeah. I'm not going to say, you know, a year down your fitness journey, you need to be counting your calories, you need to be counting your steps. To give you an awareness generally yeah. of where you are and where you could go to, because now you have that general basis and understanding in your head of yeah. food and sort of how much then your body needs to thrive. Exactly. And I was chatting to a client. She's been with me for three weeks now and um. Now, the first sort of week, I just, you know, it's getting in, just enjoy it. Then I bring in, you know, counting your calories. And she's like, I, I'm so much aware. Sorry, I'm so much more aware now of what I'm putting in my mouth because I'm logging it, because I'm counting my calories. Yeah. And what people need to realise, and I don't know if you saw the Slimming World advert, and this is why Slimming World is about to go through the press by PTs, everyone slamming them. So... This is why, you know, our original discussion was meant to be about ditching the scales, but I feel like every PT in the world is going to be saying, fuck Slimming World kind of thing. So I thought, you know, we'll talk about habits. Uh, we'll Refresh talk about something less sexy, but something that's actually really important that a lot of people forget about because they're looking for a shiny object and some like quick fix, like really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 
Yeah, slimming well, they've sort of, you know, taken counting your calories through the mud kind of thing, because obviously they're losing people to calorie counting. You know, saying, of course, eating disorders and all that stuff. But I think people need to realise is counting your calories, it's like learning a new language. Yeah. It's about learning how many calories are in, is in 100 grams of chicken. You know, that's it's about 136 calories, about 23 grams of protein. I'm sad I know that off the top of my head, because at the start of my journey... <laughs> you brushing your teeth though like that's just something you know right exactly exactly and that's where i think you know counting your steps counting your calories has such a big thing right at the start of the journey because i'm, like, I'm gonna back up slimming world a bit here and say diets notoriously i don't think work like you look at the definition the second definition of a diet is put in restrictions on to lose weight basically that to me you're setting yourself up to fail because you're putting in restrictions a good diet should be adding to your food adding to your steps yes so, honestly like what are you adding to your life yeah. rather than removing like that is really the crux of the matter like that's what you're looking for but most people are looking for something to take away and that's like you know you're taking away joy from life yeah. right 100 percent, and that's where yeah i think you know potentially adding in an extra 2000 steps a day would be beneficial you know it just gives people at the start a very good foundation to know where they need to improve so so start, start, start small with the aim of something sustainable rather than like a quick fix you know because yeah. like what's the after after then of that yeah. it's often so i mean have you seen like the statistics of the what do you call that like the biggest weight loss program yeah. The biggest loser yeah. like they're i mean what are the after afters and the you know longevity of those people they end up putting on the weight and then more than in the majority of cases right exactly like at the end of the day everyone knows you need to lose weight by a calorie deficit it's simple as that Every, everyone knows this by now come on like unless if you're an absolute moron pretty much everyone knows what a calorie deficit is right <laughs> So many people try to put in their new approach to make it new, make it sexy, make it sell. But they yeah, hide like sales and profit over people, like yeah. which is totally the opposite way. Like we really need to be thinking about the actual health of our world and trying to do something to help people out here because there is such misinformation. Like people are confused and don't know where to start as well. Yeah. Exactly. And and that's one thing where I try to stay true to myself is because I tell a lot of people, you know, count your calories to start with, as I said, for the reasons earlier on, but that's not new. That's not sexy. That's nothing. Like, if, that's been like yeah, and, but it's the weaning off that then as well can be really challenging for people. And that a lot of people are so addicted to it that they then struggle to like eat out where they don't know the calories. And that can be like a very detrimental cycle to go get to have got caught into them because you did start counting calories so i think everyone is very individual in that sense depending on their personality yeah i, I agree but i do think like so slim and world said again something very similar about that today in the press and it was like i've tried to find studies where they count calories weekly i get my clients to count all their calories weekly and when they sign up i go over why i give them the education and yeah. I feel like, yes, OK, if you're counting your calories daily with a shit coach, with shit education, I can see where it can get obsessive. OK, but, hey, yeah. You don't you spend the same. In a careful way then, is that what you're kind of saying? And, and yeah, so, you know, you don't spend the same amount of money you, you do every day. You won't spend the same amount of calories. And at the end of yeah. the day, one, one hot day does not make a summer. Just because you overeat by 3,000... 3,500 calories should make about one pound of fat. But if you eat an additional 3,500 calories in your diet over one day, over one sitting, let's say, you know, make it as damaging as possible, you're going to be moving more because you're going to have more energy. You've got something called the thermic effect of food. Your body needs so to break it down. Be buzzing, like, yeah. exactly and even this. like meat sweats, you know, meat sweats, like, yeah. You're actually sweating out because you're, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you've yeah. got excess that your body, you know, your body yeah. is seeking to achieve homeostasis. So your, exactly. body, your body does keep the score and is in your favor if you actually tune into it and let it do its thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, as I said, you know, it's, people need to realize this, a calorie doesn't go in your mouth and turn into fat. 
I know. This is what people are actually petrified of. They're like, oh my gosh, like everything's going to make me fat. And it's just such a toxic, like, you know, thought to have. Like, to think of food as fuel and to actually, you know, nourish yourself in a way that feels good for you rather than what anyone else is doing. And actually, like, trusting yourself and tuning into what you want rather than looking at what everyone else is doing. Exactly. I did a post about it is you need to change the word calories with energy because at the end of the day, a calorie is a unit of energy. Yeah, and calories style. aren't the demon. No. You, 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 you know, that's like saying you're scared of electricity because it's in watts. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you, you're you scared of a watt. No, you're scared of electricity. You're not scared of watts. Same with calories. I actually love that a hot day doesn't make a summer. That is yeah. actually just like, you know, it's so true, though, that people focus on the minute things rather than thinking of the broader picture yeah i think when it comes down to that sort of stuff you know it's counting your calories okay be it a habit that i want my client to have for one two three four however many months what it takes them to learn the new bigger habit in terms of how much calories they're actually consuming i don't count my calories anymore i dropped probably about six seven kilos when i first moved to holland by a mistake so I went back to the foundations and I was like, right, let's start counting my calories. Yeah, then you, back- can to, you can reanalyze and sort of yeah. get back into like a better habit. And then, exactly. you know, yeah. then you'll be set in your ways because you've yeah. got into a better routine in a different totally structure to what you had been doing and your different job and everything, right? Like yeah, you've exactly. adapted to that scenario. Yeah, and as silly as it sounds like, one thing I was realizing was because I was stressed out, I wasn't eating. So yes. what, I, what I literally went back and, you know, talking about bringing in new habits is I set alarms in my phone to go off when it was meant to be sort of my feeding time, if you will. I always set alarms for things like, honestly, yeah. that is such a, you know, it's a really helpful tool for a lot of people who would struggle to like take medication or, yeah. you know, just even sure there's like apps that would go off to remind you to like stand up and move you know if you've been sitting down for a long period you know things like that can really really help I mean it might sound daft but like I actually think it's really smart yeah and and it sounds very very basic and yeah yeah like I tell people some people might think it's silly obsessive or that sort of stuff but the reality is it's just a short-term solution to help build into that habit and you know your body with the hormones gremlin and all that sort of stuff yeah it gets It'll used to, norm. yeah it gets used to certain feeding windows and i've one client i sat down with them yesterday you know they don't want to count calories because they quite frankly can't be asked so it's a fantastic um she's a teacher let's just let's just start with intermittent fasting let's just skip breakfast as a bit to get down 200 calories and i told her you know for the first week two weeks you, you are going to be hungry at seven o'clock when you normally have your first meal. And but then your body will adjust. Exactly. And the thing people need to realize is hunger, hunger is like an emotion. It's like being happy. At some point, that emotion, the hunger will pass within like half hour, hour. And then come your next feeding window is when you'll be hungry again. So for her skipping breakfast, you know, she may be hungry from seven o'clock to half seven, but then her body will sort of forget about it. She'll get on with a job, then come 12 o'clock, clock lunchtime she will then be hungry again and she can eat again yeah so really like everyone is very different in you know what will work for them and it's really not a one-size-fits-all approach people have different bad habits right you know so that's a whole totally different thing never mind even starting a new habit like breaking habits is quite hard right yeah. like very hard you know, that's a totally different thing from, you know, trying to get into a new habit, actually breaking a long ingrained habit. Yeah, like fingernails. I'm trying to stop biting my fingernails. My dad's um, done that all his life, like his fingernails. I, well, I've just literally exposed my dad here. <laughs> you know, they're right down to like nothing. So I feel like that's, yeah. a, very, that's a very common one, biting nails. Yeah, I definitely. Think- and, and that's just one habit I'm trying to break. That, that I'm struggling to break. How are you going oh. about it? My friend actually did a uh, pick around her nails and she bought like a, do you know a thing that if you licked it, that it's toxic, so you can't? Yeah. Put yeah, that I, on. I've, 
Yeah, I've, I've seen them. It's something I need to invest in. But the habits, you know, as you said, you know, it's a lot harder to break a habit. Yeah. But it's a lot easier to try to replace a bad habit with a healthy habit. So, okay, you that's know, a really good way to think about it, that yeah. you're replacing that with something else that's healthy. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm uh, on the verge of just trying whenever I need to bite my nails, just try pinching myself. Yeah. So yeah. I think about that with pain and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not saying, you know, that's shit advice <laughs> when it comes down to dieting. If you're trying to lose weight, do not listen to that. That's terrible. Do not associate it with pain. But if you bite your nails, maybe it's a good way to go. Yeah. So every time you go to bite, be like, no. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I literally just asked my client to slap me around the face if they ever see me biting my nails. <laughs> Well, that's actually quite smart, but like, I'm sure you could, you could actually end up battered and bruised with such yeah. a... <laughs> yeah, but then I suppose, you know, it'd be like if, if we talk about dieting, you know, rather than thinking, right, I need to stop eating chocolate, try to replace chocolate with something else. And there's enough cheap, like, I don't want to say cheap, because that's no. terrible word for it, there's no but cheap. there's a lot of healthy alternatives for chocolate that feels sweet feels nice but it's healthy so try replacing that bad habit on eating chocolate i'll take that back eating chocolate's not a bad habit i don't want to associate those two things so i think chocolate has a place in life like in every yeah. diet for me personally like i i've been a chocoholic since birth and for each and every individual like it depends what your chocolate consumption is like whether it's excessive and you know yeah. like cutting back might be beneficial for your health or whether you know that is something that's like soul nourishing and you know just something you should keep but do you think there's like general habits that people should you know maybe try to incorporate you know just generally like we could talk about having an adequate sleep routine having some kind of movement in your day positive thinking obviously is really crucial and um, especially in this day and age nourishing your body in a way that feels good to you is there sort of anything managing yeah, I'd say, stress I'd, I'd say the first one we'll talk about standing up as silly as it sounds you know um, we stood here both stood up right just now just try and stand up more yeah. yeah just try to stand up more that's one yeah so like, i was going to say set alarms in your phone to stand up you know, I spend a lot of time in recruitment where we're all sat at, the, at a desk all day, you know, as Bluetooth. And then and everyone's going to end up off sick in the long term with bad back and bad neck and bad yeah. everything. Yeah, I think that's one. The second one is if you're struggling with sleep, try to have five habits you do just before you go to bed. And just so psychologically, you go one, two, three, four, five kind of thing. That's from James Clear, Atomic Habit. It just means psychologically, your brain's going, right, you know, I'm winding, I'm winding. You do these five th things and your brain's normally like, okay, it's bedtime now. So you fall asleep rather than watching Never Netflix. heard of that one. Yeah, that's good. So would, did he give any examples with like journaling, meditation? Uh, um, what, I was listening to him. He was talking about going to the gym because he was on a podcast with another PT. So I He's used not recommending that. going to the gym before bed, is he? Oh, no, 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 no. He, he was recommending what he does to motivate himself to work out when he doesn't have the energy to work out. And oh, okay, right. Okay, yeah. So he, he literally has five habits leading up to going to the gym including wearing the same trainers, packing the exact same bag, right, okay. all that sort of stuff. So like when he's tying up his shoelaces, that's the first step on him in the gym. Then him picking up the exact bag that he leaves in the same spot is the next step on him getting into gym mode. So I it's five you. of them. And this last one is doing five minutes on the bike. So by the yeah. time he's finished five minutes on the bike, psychologically, he's like, right, it's gym time. I'm ready. And yes, that's, it's like a knock-on series of yeah. events that leads to a final outcome. Yeah. That's class. So, okay, so those two, and then your final one. Uh, like, said sleep, you've said add up more. And... Yeah, and just be more consistent with your food and your eating. Don't think, you know, you have to eat one meal a day to lose weight because if you're eating just that one meal a day, you're more likely to have a massive meal there as well. So if you're eating like, you know, high protein, high fiber breakfasts, you're not going to be hungry as hungry coming up to lunchtime. So then so you may have to focus on lunch. the minute details, focus on like the broader picture. Of yeah. Yeah. I think, 
you know, like when it comes down to weight loss, muscle gain, you know, weight gain, whatever, it's more about calories in, calories out, very simplified. It's slightly more complicated than that. But, you know, it doesn't matter if you have one big meal or five small meals. Yeah. It's the, the, yeah. Yeah. The overall. Well, yeah. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so, yeah. so much. Um, no worries. Do you want to tell people where they can find you? <laughs> yeah. So it's Jordan underscore Lambert. But my last name, I've changed the spelling to do with my PT stuff. So it's L-A-M-B-E-R-P-T. Yes. So it's Jordan underscore Lambert PT. Yeah. 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 I'll add it in the description anyway, so people will be able to find you. And for more like debunking of the shit show of fitness and food and life kind of thing. Just on Insta Instagram. Love it. <laughs> it's the Instagram. That's absolutely genius. <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure I will chat to you very soon. And um, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you for you for your time. Have a great day. Thanks. Same to you.